What's good, y'all? What's the numbers TV? It's your boy, Poe Row. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And like a video if you appreciate the content that Poe Row and What's the Numbers I provided. Today we back with a profile piece. This one is on Dimitri the Jeweler. In this video, we're going to talk about his early years growing up in Bulgaria. Then we'll talk about the reason Dimitri relocated to the United States, where eventually he would enter the jewelry business. After that, we will speak about his time as a celebrity jeweler in the Philadelphia area before breaking down the situation that currently has Dimitri behind bars facing 20 years in prison after being convicted of selling counterfeit Rolexes. Dimitri Hajib, better known as Dimitri the Jeweler, is from Bulgaria, which is a country in Southeast Europe. He attended school there to the year 2000, when at 20 years old, he moved to the United States to take classes at Delaware County Community College, which is actually located in Pennsylvania. With English not being his primary language, Dimitri was a little bit behind some of his classmates, but eventually over time, he began to understand the English language and learn how to speak it fluently. After his student visa expired, he applied for a work visa and got into the jewelry business on an apprentice level at first, although in his head, Dimitri had dreams of being way bigger. He would relocate to the Philadelphia area and by 2010 was working out of Ice Fire Jewelry which is located on South Street, right down the block from Sean Jewelers, a spot that is very popular with today's rappers and entertainers. At Ice Fire Jewelry, Dimitri was able to build his client list, first starting with the local drug dealer or scammer, to eventually making his way up to the who's who of the Philadelphia music scene. From there, Dimitri was able to expand and started selling jewelry to the many different celebrities that were coming to the city. His name started to spread around town, inspiring him to create a YouTube page in 2011 to help promote his talents and everyday hustle as an up-and-coming jeweler. Now, the jewelry business is a tough business to break into, as it's very competitive. Sometimes jewelers might tweak a few things or replace a few stones as a way to lower the price so that they could compete in the market. Dimitri over time started to be known for his watch game as he had the ability to sell you an ice style Rolex for a decent price. A bunch of rappers and athletes bought Rolex watches and chains off of Dimitri, each with a video commemorating the occasion. Names like Gilly the Kid, Tiger, The Game, and Andre Eagle Dollar were all known to stop by Dimitri's jewelry shop whenever they were in town. Dimitri was doing his thing, making money and satisfying his customers' wants as he kept trying to get bigger and bigger in the jewelry game. Guys like Ben Baller, TV Johnny, and the many well-known jewelers in the New York City Diamond District were really making a killing as their names were known all throughout the hip-hop industry. Over time, Sean Jewelers would end up becoming the number one jeweler in the Philadelphia area thanks to his relationship with rappers like Meek Mill and Lil Uzi. Most customers liked Sean's work and diamond quality a little more than the other jewelers in the area which helped him jump to the front of the pack. Dimitri, on the other hand, was still making lots of money, but rumors that his jewelry was fake or not what it claimed to be started to spread around the city little by little. But even with the rumors out there, Dimitri was still making money hand over fist, as the Rolex watches looked at as a hood trophy in today's day and age. Rolexes are wrapped about on a consistent basis by some of the biggest rappers in the game, creating a demand for them that has been prevalent in our culture for years. Eventually, Dimitri's buzz would get so big around the city, he would change the name of his shop to Dimitri's Jewelry and Watches. He would have a good run in the game at his shop, selling enough watches to where he was able to make some good money to help him and his family live comfortable. But in August of 2019, things would come crashing down when Dimitri was arrested at his jewelry store and transported to the FBI facility in Philadelphia where he was interrogated by the FBI about his involvement in selling counterfeit Rolexes as well as some money laundering. He had a convo with the feds about cooperating, but eventually decided not to and asked for his lawyer. At that point, he was charged with trafficking and counterfeit goods and some financial fraud offenses. For the next few years, the case would play itself out in the court system while Dimitri, who the judge said could be a flight risk, sat in jail waiting for his day in court. And that day would present itself in November of 2022 when Dimitri would put 12 in a box and try to beat the feds at trial. Unfortunately for him, he was unsuccessful and was found guilty of trafficking and counterfeit goods and financial fraud offenses related to his sale of counterfeit luxury wristwatches. Dimitri is facing years in prison and deportation once sentenced for his crimes, and with that, the rise and fall of a well-known Philadelphia jeweler is complete. We will have to wait and see if this is the last we will hear of Dimitri the jeweler in the United States. But yo, it's What's the Numbers TV is a quick profile piece on Dimitri Haji, better known as Dimitri the Jeweler. Now the feds say he was selling fake watches since 2014, maybe before that. 
He made close to a million dollars off these watches. Basically, he was taking watches, putting fake parts or aftermarket parts. Some saying it was just fake watches that he was making look like they was real. You know, putting some diamonds on them or lab diamonds, whatever. And, you know, settling for thousands and thousands of dollars. The feds themselves said they went and bought a watch off from 29000 that happened to be fake. And that they watched him deposit the money or they, like, you know, followed the paper trail. And he made sure that all deposits was under 10000 not to raise the red flag as far as, like, the money. You know, but he got to report it for tax reasons. And, you know, they've been watching it for years and years and years. Now, he got, he got, he got locked up. You know, he had a bunch of celebrity customers, you know, so it's easy to say maybe their jewelry was fake too. Hey, that, that's been a running narrative for years that a lot of these entertainers' jewelry is fake. So, you know, this just fits on, right under that, um... You know, under that, that f this falls under that category basically because he's selling these fake watches for years, and he got videos on his YouTube or videos other for other people on YouTube with him dealing with celebrities and rappers and entertainers and athletes for years. So you know, it is what it is. I'm sure he's not the only jeweler doing this. It wasn't the first, probably won't be the last. Now, as far as you know, he had a YouTube page where he was trying to, you know, basically before Sean Jewelers and all that, I guess he was trying to, you know, do his thing. But, you know, the jewelry game is shady, and he had a lot of shady things going on with him. And, you know, it looked like it backfired and got himself locked up to where he's facing a whole bunch of years in jail, deportation, all things like that. Now, like I say, you know, jewelry isn't needed. You know, I didn't have some jewelry in my life. A lot of people have jewelry in my life. You know, what jewelry does, I'm going to give you my assessment of what jewelry does. Jewelry draws attention, you know what I'm saying? It could draw good attention. It could draw bad attention. You know, if you're looking for attention from the ladies or something, it might get you that attention. But it also might get you that attention from the sticker kids, too. So, you know, you got to know what it is. Then you got to know it's different levels to jewelry. You understand what I'm saying? It's, di it's different levels. Like, you know, the $5,000 chain ain't going to hit like the $50,000 chain. It's different levels, and there's dudes out there wearing all different levels of jewelry. So you got to know what you're looking at if you're in the jewelry game. You got to know what you're buying. You understand what I'm saying? Everything that looks good isn't the real deal. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to think about during the pandemic, during all that time we was making all that money, you know, I bet the jeweler, all the jewelers in America made a lot of money, you know what I'm saying? Now that the, 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 the pandemic, the slowed down, the pandemic, everything's back to getting back to normal. You know, a lot of that jewelry, when people go back to try to get their money for what they spent on it, they're realizing that they're not getting what they spent. So let that be a lesson, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to buy some jewelry, you know, you're pretty much just buying it for yourself and what eyes and attention they can get you, you know. Now, if you're getting some, a commemorative piece, a memorabilia piece, somebody might have passed away or, you know, something like that, I understand. But like I said, just know what you're buying. Don't waste your money foolishly because you could take that money you're spending and spend it somewhere else and make money on the money you're spending. So I don't want to ramble too long, man. Shout out to everybody in the building. Check out the podcast on all streaming fat platforms. Follow Batty Bills on IG. Follow What's The Numbers TV on IG. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel right here. Click the link in the bio. Click the subscribe button. Click the notification bells. All that good stuff. About to hit 83,000 subscribers on our way to 100K. This is Paul Rowe, What's The Numbers TV. We appreciate y'all tuning in. We out of here. Peace.